Welcome back to the 2020 sim of the Toronto Blue Jays season using Out of the Park Baseball 21. I'm Jay Blue. I am the author of Blue Jays from Away and the 2020 Toronto Blue Jays Minor League Handbook. That's available at the uh, bluejaysfromaway.com website in the shop as well as um, on Amazon.com in print and for Kindle. So if you want to check out some of the minor league players and see some profiles and and uh, more info about the minor league players we're going to be talking about, that's a great source for you. Uh, also, like this, the channel, the GM Games channel. They've got some great, uh, great sims going on and uh, vlogs and uh, a lot of fun stuff that they've got going on, different sports, uh, if you like other sports other than baseball, because uh, it's a great resource for you. Um, we're going to get going today. Uh, just want to start off by giving a shout out to all the, the Blue Jays minor leaguers who might be listening in. I know one of them contacted me and, uh, you know, we, we got him into the game a little bit earlier than perhaps might have been had we uh, just you know, ran things out. Uh, we had an opportunity. So Edison Gonzalez was injured for the Lansing Lugnuts. And we're going to actually head to the the pitching staff. We're going to actually go to the Lugnuts as we get uh, as we get organized here. And we can see that uh, Edison Gonzalez was injured. He's going to be out for the season. He's got a torn flexor tendon. So what did we do? We brought up the the gentleman who contacted us, and uh, we're going to see how he does in the game. And that would be the pitcher. There he is right there, Grant Townsend. Welcome to the Lansing Lugnuts, Grant Townsend. As you can see from his stats, he was in Vancouver for most of 2019, had some great stats, struck out more than a batter per inning, and he pitched a couple of times in the uh, Florida State League for the Dunedin Blue Jays. Uh, just two outings there. I think they were both uh, towards the beginning of the year before the short season leagues opened. So that's where we're starting. We've actually simmed the week already. Um, and so we're going to give you some of the highlights. The Blue Jays, let's check out our schedule here. The Blue Jays had another solid week, and we went we went two losses, four wins over the week. So we went four and two. We're now 16 and 12. Our first game was against the Boston Red Sox. We lost eight to three. Um, that was on April 21st. And... That game, you know, Bo Bichette was two for five, Derek Fisher two for four. And one of the things that we are actually the most concerned about is Matt Shoemaker. Matt Shoemaker was the starter in this game, and Shoemaker went four innings, giving up a home run, five runs, and uh, on seven hits. So he his ERA is up to 13.25. Very scary. Sean Yamaguchi is another guy that we are actually quite concerned about. He hit a home, or he gave up another home run. He's been getting really hammered. Um, two more runs and two innings. So this is the guy. These are the two guys that we're really watching on the pitching side for the Blue Jays because these guys are really struggling early on. Sam Gavilio as well. He can definitely. Uh, he's on the guys who are sort of on the a short leash right now. Um, offensively, we didn't have much of a good game here. We only scored three runs on ten hits, though. As we said, Bichette and Fisher each had a pair of hits, and uh, all of them were singles. So nobody hit a double, nobody hit a home run. Bichette did steal a base. In the second game of the week, we rebounded. We beat the Boston Red Sox 11-5. to Danny Jansen had a huge game going 4-5, for five, scoring twice, driving in three runs. And Chase Anderson got his third win. I think that's the most on the team right now. Um, he went seven innings, three runs, three strikeouts, 11 hits. Anthony Kay got hit hard. That was his first really... Um, I mean, it wasn't too hard. He just gave out two runs. But um, that was sort of his first struggle of the of the season. Wilmer Font sort of was, uh, you know, getting hit hard, giving up a home run, four hits, three runs in two-thirds of an inning before Ken Giles came on and nailed it down. On the offensive side, in addition to Danny Jansen's two doubles, uh, we got two doubles from uh, our good friend Vladi Guerrero, who is now hitting 340. Uh, Derek Fisher was two for five. Fisher had a home run in the action. Um, 
Brandon Drury was two for six. Lourdes Gurriel, two for six. Vladi also walked twice. So a solid game all around from the uh, the offense. Starting pitcher was, was very good. The bullpen did give up some of those runs and made that game a lot closer, leaving uh, a save opportunity for Ken Giles. In that third game against Boston, we split... Uh, we didn't. We lost it, losing after the split, the rubber match. We so we lose the series two to one. Um, the Jays didn't get much offense; just four hits overall. Um, Shaw had an RBI. Vladdy had an RBI, and Thornton was hit fairly hard, giving up five runs, but only two were earned. No walks, so that's a good sign. Four strikeouts for Thornton. Anthony Bass with a solid outing, and Shun Yamaguchi went a third of an inning and did not give up a home run, needing only two pitches to get the one batter he faced. Then we opened a series against the Baltimore Orioles. Um, not a good team. They're 10 and 15 so far at this point, and we won the first game four to three. Hyunjin Ru had a good start going six innings, four hits, one run, uh, just off a solo home run, while Jordan Romano had his first poor outing of the year, two runs, including a home run in two innings. Ken Giles, his eighth save of the year. Giles has really been hot. That's got his ERA down to 1.69. On the offensive side, we had uh, Vladdy Guerrero was two, had two hits again, and he was two for four with two doubles again. That pushes his average to 337. Travis Shaw was two for four, and he had a home run among those two hits. Um, the only home run of the game for us. Uh, a guy we're keeping a close eye on is Teoscar Hernandez. He was one for three with a walk. So that brings his batting average up to 193. So that's not too bad. And Bobichet was one for four with a walk. And he did steal a base, but he made an error too. In the second game against the Orioles, we won again, eight to six. And in this one, Lourdes Gurriel scored three times. Uh, he hit a three, sorry, he didn't score three times, but he hit a three run home run in the top of the ninth to give us the lead and give us the win. Uh, in addition to Goriel, we had Bichette, who was 0 for 2, but walked three times. Biggio was 2 for 5. Grichik hit a home run, going 1 for 5 with 2 RBI. And Fisher was 1 for 4. On the mound, Tanner, Tanner Roark was hit hard. Six runs on six hits and two walks in an inning and a third. Wilmer Font picked things up really nicely, striking out five and three and a third scoreless innings. Anthony Bass had a scoreless inning. Shun Yamaguchi, showing off his stuff, struck out three in two innings, did not give up a home run or a run and we'll we'll take a look at Yamaguchi towards the end of this uh, episode and we'll talk about sort of what he's showing while Ken Giles got his ninth save another scoreless inning for 100 miles Giles and the final game of the week for the Blue Jays was a 7 to 4 win against those very um Baltimore Orioles and we had 3 for 4 game from Bo Bichette which was very nice, and he had a double run, a stolen base, so he's really doing things all around, really getting hot. Um, Shaw was two for five with another home run this week, so it's two home runs for Shaw this week. Danny Jansen was one for four with another home run, and on the mound, Matt Shoemaker turned things around, going seven and a third, three runs, two earned, six strikeouts. He did give up two home runs, but very solid outing for Shoemaker, and I think he's buying himself a little bit of time. We'll talk about that in his role a little bit later. Uh, Jordan Romano picked up the save, so nice Markham, Ontario boy getting the save. So that was the week for the Toronto Blue Jays. Now let's take a look at the Buffalo Bisons. The Buffalo Bisons have some interesting things to keep an eye on. Um, they had about a me mediocre week. They're now a game under 500. They won two against Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, the Yankees AAA team, and then lost two of three to the Rochester Red Wings, who are the Minnesota Twins, uh, Minnesota Twins uh, AAA affiliate. First game here on April 20th. We got a 4-1 win in 10 innings. Andy Burns had a three-run walk-off home run going two for five, while Billy McKinney also hit a home run and went two for four. Santiago Espinal is hitting fairly well, two for five, two doubles. Knight, uh, Nash Knight was two for four. On the mound is another guy we're keeping a very close eye on, and that's Nate Pearson. Pearson went five and two-thirds, one run allowed, 
and just three hits, two walks, five strikeouts. A.J. Cole, three and a third scoreless innings. He's probably going to be a guy who gets called up if we need a reliever in Toronto anytime soon. He's been fairly solid, and he is you know, a major league guy. He's got 50 stuff, 40 movement. Uh, the movement generally in this game translates to a lot of home runs, so uh, he may get a little bit bonked in the, the majors particularly Toronto. Toronto is a very big uh, park for home runs. Uh, and Ty Tice got, uh, got the win in that walk-off victory. In the second game, uh, a big highlight for the Buffalo Bisons was uh, Santiago Espinal, who was three for four with two RBI. Um, Merriweather got the start. He was okay, but Jake Petrichka was good. Uh, we're not going to go into every little thing uh, about every little game. I'm not going to show you every box score. But uh, in the third game, our loss to Scranton Wilkes-Barre, we lost 13-3. to um, We had Patrick Kivlahan and Billy McKinney were two for four each. McKinney hit a home run. Ryan Barucki was the starter for that one. And Barucki was not having a great outing six runs on eight hits and three and two thirds and Thomas Pannone who had been strong earlier in the season um, six runs five earned in two innings of work so it was not a good day for the pitchers on April 22nd April 23rd Buffalo had off April 24th uh, the Bisons got a seven uh, took a seven to one loss to Rochester um, Taylor Sacedo was strong in relief you can see that here, and so is James Dykstra. Dykstra was a guy the Blue Jays signed after seeing him on Twitter and after uh, the pitching ninja Rob Friedman had posted uh, some of the, the video that uh, Dykstra had edited and put up there. And, and basically, he was signed off that video and his uh, TrackMan data that he had from the Independent Atlantic League last year. So... That was a very strong outing for Dykstra. Sean Reed Foley got hit hard in the loss. And uh, offensively, there wasn't a lot going on, just Mitch Walding hitting a double. We go to April 25th, and the Buffalo Bisons got a 1-1, one nothing win over the Rochester Red Wings. And that was an excellent pitching performance from TJ Zoik, who was the player of the game. Five, uh, six and a third scoreless innings on five hits and a walk, just two strikeouts. And again, He's a ground ball pitcher, so if we look ground ball to flyouts, that's actually an uncommonly even ratio, eight to eight. Um, but Zoik with an outstanding outing, showing us you know the fact that he did throw a no hitter last year in the Buffalo uh, rotation. Zach Jackson with a strong outing, Ty Tice giving up two hits and a walk, but he still picked up the save for his second one of the year. And the last game of the week was a five to three loss to the Rochester Red Wings, and. Pearson was on the mound again. Pearson uh, went four and two-thirds innings through 86 pitches, five walks. That's the big red flag there. He only gave up one hit, five walks, three strikeouts. Jackson McClelland was touched up a little bit for two runs, as so was Justin Miller. We're going to go to the New Hampshire Fisher Cats and check out what happened with them. For the Fisher Cats, we had a nice game in that opening game, an 8-4 to win against the Trenton Thunder, the Yankees AA uh, affiliate. Uh, got a two, a three-run home run from Kevin Smith in the bottom of the sixth. We also got a run-scoring double from Brock Lundquist. Gabriel Guerrero hit a triple. Demi Oramaloy had two hits and a double, including a double. Kevin Vicuña had two hits, and we're going to see uh, kind of a rally from Vicuña, who was two for four here. He's hitting 289 on the first day of this sim. On the mound, we had Elvis Luciano have a pretty mediocre start for runs and four innings. John Harris, though, was solid coming in, striking out six to pick up the win without giving up a run. So good to see John Harris having a nice start to this season. On April 21st, the second day of the week, we had an injury to Andrew Sopko, our starting pitch, pitcher who went three and a third innings. Brock Lundquist hit a home run. Logan Warmoth was three for three, hit a double and a home run. So that was, I think, player of the game worthy for him. Let's see if he got it. He did. He was player of the game. You can see that was his first home run of the year, and he had a double. And uh, on the mound, Vinny Natoli got into the game, Corey Copping. The game was called in the seventh for bad weather. And it, this is interesting because I've rarely, if ever, seen a, um, 
an OOTP game called early because of weather. So that's that's a really interesting innovation that if it's, this is the first year they've done it, then uh, that's really cool. I really like that. Um, I really like that, that touch of realism. Uh, in the next game, we lost. The Fisher Cats lost. Uh, sorry, the Fisher Cats lost four to one to the Trenton Thunder. They got a kind of mediocre outing from Hector Perez. Maximo Castillo was okay coming in. Justin Dillon um, went two innings, one hit, two strikeouts in relief. Josh Palacios had two hits, including a double. Gabby Guerrero hit a double. Kevin Smith was one for three with a walk. And Vinny Capra, one for two with uh, a walk. And that was that game. And we moved on to play the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, formerly the Binghamton Mets, now the Binghamton Rumble Ponies. And we won the first game of that series, 9-3. to three. Josh Palacios hit a home run going, uh, he's here, 2 for 4 with 3 RBI. Kevin Smith, another home run, 1 for 3. Gabby Guerrero, 2 for 3 with a double. Kevin Vicuña, now at the top of the order, hitting 2 for 4, 3 runs in RBI, a walk, including a double. Uh, Alejandro Kirk was two for five and Ryan Noda 0 for two, but three walks. And in fact, while Noda is hitting 75, he is, uh, we're going to talk about this later. He's among the league leaders in walks on the mound. Joey Murray striking out another nine. Murray has been outstanding this season and Travis Bergen with a three inning save. Second game against the Rumble Ponies was a loss. We lost six to one. Only important things to keep an eye on. Patrick Murphy went five innings, gave up four runs. Um, and Kevin Vicuña was two for four again. In the next game on April 25th, we faced uh, Binghamton again, losing four to two. Kevin Vicuña with another two hits, including a double. Ryan Noda got another couple hits, so he is... Um, he is now hitting 104, so that brings up his average quite a bit. Um, also in this game, we had uh, John Harris uh, relieving Elvis Luciano, who had a, de a decent outing, one run in six innings. Harris had another one run outing, three and a third innings. He's taken to that long relief role fairly well and kind of piggybacking here on Elvis Luciano's shorter starts. I think he's got a, um, we can check that now. I think he's got a, uh, pitch count. Uh, let's check here. His strategy. So he has a pitch count of 85. So that's on the low side. I don't mind that. I do. I actually like it because it is giving someone like Harris a chance to get some innings in. We have too many pitchers on just about all of these teams. And um, I think in our next sim, it's going to be Judgment Day. We're going to look at uh, culling the numbers a little bit. Uh, the Blue Jays have made some cuts in real life. Um but we're, I think, just because of the numbers and not everybody's going to get a chance to pitch. And you'll see when we go through the rosters a little bit later, um, you'll just see how how heavy we are in pitching and, and how guys are just not getting a chance to go out there and throw. So we've got some tough decisions to make. Um, the final game was a 4-1 to one loss against Binghamton. Uh, Vicuña was 3-5, for five, so another multi-hit for him. Um, and he had a double. Cullen Large was 1-for-1 one one with two walks. Brock Lundquist 1-for-3. Andrew Sopko got on the mound, so he didn't go on the injured list. Sopko got on the mound, had a very strong outing. Six innings, one run, six hits, two walks, three strikeouts. Sopko was very, very good in New Hampshire last year. Let's see if we can get that up. He had 34 and two-thirds innings in New Hampshire, eight walks, 26 strikeouts, but he really started to get hit hard in Buffalo, and I did see one of those starts last year. Let's move down to the Dunedin Blue Jays, who won two, three, four wins and three losses, playing Fort Myers and then playing, um, playing Daytona. And against Fort Myers, who are the Minnesota Twins, Florida State League affiliate. They opened with a 4 to 3 win in 10 innings, getting a double from Christopher Beck and that helped them go to the win. We also got a two-run home run from Griffin Conine and a run scoring single. So Conine was 2 for 3 with 3 RBI. Uh, Chavez Young, two for five. On the mound, Josh Winkowski, three runs, four and a third innings. Um, again, he may have a pitch count. I'm gonna just going to try to check that out. He does. He has a pitch count of 85 pitches. Um, 
his stamina is only 45. So he may be, they may be looking at him in the game as somebody who may not be a starter long term because of that. We got a nice outing from Justin Maesi coming in to take over. Um, and the bullpen did a very nice job shutting the Fort Myers mighty muscles down uh, for the rest of the game. Game two of the week, April 21st, was a 12 to 5 loss. Otto Lopez hit two doubles. Ryan Gold was two for three. Uh, Samad Taylor hit a home run. Nick Allgaier was banged up for six runs in four innings. Jackson Reese was also hit for three runs. And Sean Rakowski was hit for two runs in just one inning. On April 22nd, we won 2-0. Let's take a look at that game. I love to see well-pitched games on Out of the Park Baseball. And we got a 6 and two thirds shutout innings from Cree, uh, Cree Finfrock. Finfrock gave up just one hit but walked five. So that's something to keep an eye on is to make sure that he's, he's able to go without walking guys. But he's got a zero ERA so far this year. He is being put in there as a starter. He's got three pitches with some room to grow, 55 stamina. So it looks like the game really has him down as a guy who really has a lot of potential. Um, they've got a two-star potential on him, even though the pitch ratings here are are somewhat fringy for his potential. Um, seven walks, six strikeouts. That's definitely something to keep an eye on. We can see the stuff has a potential of 45 for Finfrock. Uh, Turner Larkins, three strikeouts in an inning, a third, and Sean Weimer with his fifth save, fifth save. Gabby Moreno hit a double, and that was the run-scoring double that finished off the game for the Dunedin Blue Jays. Gave him a little bit of uh, two runs, two RBIs for him, so that gave the Blue Jays the win, ultimately. Moving along, our fourth game against the Fort Myers Miracle on April 23rd. That was a loss, four to one. Chavez Young was two for four with a double. Samad Taylor, two for four. Uh, Griffin Conine, one for three. I almost called him Jeff Conine. Uh, Griffin Conine, one for three with a double, an RBI, and a walk. Uh, Woods Richardson, so Simeon Woods Richardson, had a bounce back outing. He was roughed up a bit in his last outing, but he was solid. Six innings, one run, four hits, two walks, six strikeouts. That's about as good as a line as you're going to expect from anybody. It was Willie Ortiz who actually took the loss, three runs in two thirds of an inning. Moving on to face the Daytona Tortugas and the Dunedin Blue Jays took a 7 to nothing win. Alec Manoa, who is a guy that we have been watching, he has been struggling to start the year. You can see a 6.75 ERA, even after six and a third scoreless innings, uh, two hits, two walks, seven strikeouts. So that's a nice turnaround for uh, Manoa. And Maverick Buffo finished off the game, preserving the shutout for the team. At bat, they had a three for four game from Jake Brot and... Uh, Griffin Conine had another big game, two for three, two runs, and a walk. We won again against the Daytona Tortugas. Uh, Samad Taylor had a big game, two for three. Let's show you that box score. Uh, Samad Taylor, two for three with uh, two doubles. And uh, Casey Clemens was two for four. Two runs, an RBI. Chavez Young, one for three, and a double. On the mound, Josh Winkowski with a strong start. Five innings, one run, five hits, and five strikeouts. Uh, Mike Ellenbest gave up two other runs. And Sean Weimer with another scoreless inning. He's got a zero ERA through six outings, and he's got five saves. Uh, six saves, I'm sorry. That was a sixth save there. And finally, the last day of the sim was a rough game for the pitching staff, losing nine to eight to the Daytona Tortugas, who have a 10-7 and seven record. Dunedin Blue Jays are 9-8 and eight after the week. And we had Samad Taylor really coming on strong, 3-for-3, three three, with uh, two walks, a home run, two doubles. Casey Clemens was 3-for-5 with two RBI. Otto Lopez, 2-for-5. Jake Brote, 2-for-5. And on the mound, Nick Allgaier, who I had to actually force start as a starting pitcher, five runs on five innings. He's got a 9.5 ERA. Graham Spraker gave up three runs, and Connor Law gave up another run before Marcus Reyes and Brad Wilson finished it off. Brad Wilson's another guy who has a 0.9 ERA 
so far this season. Nice start for Wilson. And now we go to the Lansing Lugnuts, back to the beginning of the week. And the Lansing Lugnuts started off with a 5-4 victory over the South Bend Cubs. And if you notice here, we've played six games against the Cubs. We have won them all. Uh, that first game, we had DJ Neal and Jesus Lopez with home runs. Neal also hitting a double. Will Robertson with two hits, including a double. And Adam Kloffenstein... Uh, was went four innings and gave up four runs. And uh, Hagen Danner with three scoreless innings, um, still being used as a two-way player. Kobe Johnson, another strong inning. He's been good so far. Josh Hyatt has also been good so far. Uh, and now going into game two, we had a 4 nothing shutout. And... On the mound, Alex Nolan, Canadian boy from Ontario, played his college ball at Brock University. Nolan went seven and a third, scoreless innings, five strikeouts. Jared DeCessory, one and two thirds innings, two strikeouts. On the offensive side, Will Robertson hit a double, one for three. And um, Tanner Morris also hit a double for to help the, uh, the Lugnuts win. And to sweep the series, a 7-3 win on April 22nd, we had Jesus Lopez hit another home run. We had uh, Robertson go 2-4 for four with a couple doubles. DJ Neal 2-4, for four. Cameron Eden 1-3. for three. On the mound, Juan Nunez, 5 scoreless innings. He did walk 4 and strike out 4. Matt Shannon gave up 2 runs. Will McAffer, another Canadian boy from British Columbia, was 1 and 2 thirds innings with a run on two walks and a hit, including a home run. Opening up a series against the Bowling Green Hot Rods. This is interesting for me, being a you know a Blue Jays minor league fan, watching the Lansing Lugnut, watching the Lansing Lugnuts for years. Um, they've always struggled with the Bowling Green Hot Rods. It's one of the longest road trips for the uh, for the Lugnuts in the Midwest League. Uh, they're the furthest south team in the Midwest League. And so it's one of their longest road trips. But they opened with a win. They actually had two wins in that series. So it's great to see the Lugnuts handling the Bowling Green Hot Rods pretty nicely. Uh, first win, we had Cameron Eden going three for four with a home run. It's very nice to see Eden. Eden, I've been forced starting in center field. I think that's where they're, he's going to play the most. He was drafted kind of both as an infielder and an outfielder. He's off to a fantastic start this season. Uh, you'll see he'll still keep producing in the next couple days because at this game he was hitting 293. But uh, by the time we get to the end of the week, he's at a 317 batting average. We also had five RBI from uh, McGregory Contreras, who hit a home run, and Tanner Morris was two for five. DJ Neal was two for five. One of the key guys to keep an eye on here is Juan DePaula. DePaula is 22. He came to the Blue Jays in the Kevin Pillar trade last year, and he went eight and a third innings, just failing to finish it off. One run, two hits, one walk, seven innings, uh, seven strikeouts. Luke Gillingham filled, fit, uh, finished it off. Um, DePaula earning that player of the game award. Second game against the Bowling Green Hot Rods. Lugnas lost 8-7. to seven. Contreras hit another home run. We also got a home run from Will Robertson, and who was 2-for-3 with a home run and 3 RBI, adding a walk. Jesus Lopez is another guy who has really... Uh, come on, he's hitting 302 now, going two for two with an RBI, two runs and two stolen bases. However, he was injured while running the bases, and Kyle Johnston was injured with forearm tendonitis on the mound. So he only went two and two thirds. Nick Fraze was hit hard, relieving him. Um, Andy Ravel gave up a run, striking out four and in two innings. Troy Miller came in, giving up two runs in. Uh, no innings without getting anybody out. Grayson Huffman and Kobe Johnson finished it off. And in our last game of the week, as the Lugnuts had Sunday off, they beat the Bowling Green Hot Rods six to uh, sorry nine to three on April twenty fifth. And Adam Kloffenstein got the win: seven innings, 
three runs. Parker Karachi, three strikeouts in two innings to finish it off. Um, on the offensive side, DJ Neal, three for five with a double, three RBI, stolen base. Cameron Eden, three for five and a double. Uh, LJ Talley, two for five with a home run, two RBI. Ronnie Brito was two for five. And Philip Clark, a guy who we're keeping an eye on and we're going to have to make some decisions about. Uh, one for three with an RBI, two walks. We're going to take a little bit of a closer look at him a little bit later. So that's the summary for this week. Let's take a look at some um, some overall storylines. So one of the things that we were thinking about is, you know, when do we bring up uh, Nate Pearson? Uh, the one pitcher who's really struggling for the Blue Jays right now is Matt Shoemaker. And Shoemaker has a 10.17 ERA, 25 and two-thirds innings. And, you know, he's really struggling. So that's a 10.17, not 0.17. I have a quite a small screen on my laptop, so not all the numbers get through all the time. Uh, he has given up 11 home runs in 25 and two-thirds innings. And I've noticed that the movement um, aspect is one of the biggest things for a pitcher to give up home runs. So 25 and two-thirds innings, 11 home runs, that's just unsustainable. Um, let's see if he improves that. He's already put up a zero, negative 0 0.8 war. So I'm really a little bit worried about Shoemaker. And so right now, the way things are going, Shoemaker is probably the best candidate for... Um, for, you know, losing his spot to Nate Pearson. Uh, I didn't want to look at ratings. I want to look at his contract. So he's only got a contract for this coming season. So if we do end up having to cut ties with Shoemaker, it's not going to be a longer term financial uh, decision. Tanner Roark is the next, I guess, worst starter. We're, you know, we're sort of expecting him to have about a mid to high fours ERA. So that 590 is not too bad. Um, six strikeout or six walks, 23 strikeouts, definitely not bad. In the bullpen, we're definitely concerned about Shun Yamaguchi. 6.19 ERA. He's given up six home runs in 16 innings. That is just atrocious. But his whip is 1.31. He's only walked three, and he struck out 28. That's an amazing 15.8 strikeouts per nine innings. So while he does have a negative 0.1 war right now, and that movement is 40, which is uh, the same as Matt Shoemaker, which tends to result in a lot of home runs, he's got the stuff to sort of bring it around. And really, for him, it's his off-speed stuff that is really exceptional. So if Yamaguchi can put a few outings, a few solid outings together, that is actually going to be a really great addition to the bullpen. Um, other than that, the only other guy we're really keeping an eye on and maybe sort of on the fence about right now, whether to send him down, is Sam Gaviglio. Gaviglio, seven innings, nine ERA. Um, aside from that, everybody's been pretty okay. Um, the bullpen is pretty solid so far. So I'm definitely just leaning to watching Kay and Yamaguchi. Yamaguchi does have a two-year contract. So... It's not a ton of money, but we don't want to just throw money away. I'm sure our owner is not going to be the most uh, generous. On the offensive side, the guys that we're really looking at right now, Danny Jansen and Reese McGuire are both performing a little bit under league average, but Jansen is definitely coming around. He had a home run this week, um, and he's brought his OPS up to 722. Travis Shaw, nothing to complain about there. Rowdy Telez has cooled off a bit. His uh, OPS is now 1.081. It was like 1.2 something last time. Um, Kevin Biggio is definitely struggling offensively. Um, Vladdy Guerrero Jr., 919 OPS. That's very good. He's not hitting a ton of home runs, but his power is translating into doubles. And we still have some growth there, both for his eye, avoiding Ks, uh, his contact potential. I mean, this guy's just going to be a monster when he finishes developing. Um, defense is pretty low. Uh, I think we all knew that was going to happen. We may have him playing first base in spring training next year to try to get him some experience in that position fairly soon. But Vladdy definitely can be just a monster at the plate. Bo Bichette, he's back to league average offense, 101 OPS plus, 749 OPS, four home runs. He's stealing some bases. 
Um, that's down over here at the right end, five stolen bases. So we're seeing some great stuff there from Bo. The concern is really in the outfield with Teoscar Hernandez. Derek Fisher is still hitting. Hernandez has a 62 OPS plus. That means he's 38% below league average with a 607 OPS. Um, he does have four home runs, but he's got 110 plate appearances, 38 strikeouts. I think that's the most on the team. That is indeed the most on the team. That turns into roughly a 35% strikeout rate, which is just awful. Um, we need to get that into check. So Tay Oscar is the guy. I think I'm giving him one more week, maybe up until um, May 1st, before we make a decision on him. I'm basically going to give a lot of the guys in the minor leagues till May 1st. Um, let's go down to Buffalo. We'll check out the guys who are really... Um, we're keeping an eye on Nate Pearson. We've given him a hundred pitch limit. He's got a 177 ERA. The one thing I'm keeping an eye on here is the walks. He's got 11 walks in 20 and a third innings, 18 strikeouts. His stuff has so much potential, particularly in his off-speed stuff. His curveball could be a 70, which is just unreal. Changeup could be 65. If all that comes together, he could be one of the best pitchers in the league. Julian Merriweather has not been great as a starter. We may move him to the bullpen. That 35 movement rating, especially since he's 28, um, that probably is not going to get any higher. So that means he may not be a good fit for the Blue Jays, especially since guys with a 40 rating, at least according to our scouts, um, a 40 rating are, they're getting hammered in the major leagues. Guys like Matt Shoemaker, Sean Yamaguchi, they're giving up tons of home runs. So a guy with a 35 rating may be just uh, overmatched. We can see that TJ Zoic still has somewhere to go. So if he comes in with this um, grouping of, of ratings, 45 stuff, 55 movement, 50 control, if he makes it up to his potential, I really think he could be a solid back of the end guy in the major league, uh, back of the rotation guy in the major leagues. Everybody has gotten into at least one game, but you can see we have 18 pitchers here in uh, Buffalo. Brian Moran has gotten one and two thirds innings, Jackson McClellan, three and two thirds. So a lot of guys, Jacob Wagaspak, two and a third, uh, James Dykstra, three and two thirds. A lot of guys, Zach Jackson, only three and a third, um, really getting very little usage. So when May 1st comes around, that's going to be our next uh, sim. When that day comes around, we're actually going to go through and look to uh, cull the herd a little bit. We're going to try to cut these numbers down. It's going to be tough. It really is going to be tough, but we definitely need to, to get the pitchers that we want to have around more opportunities. On the lineup side, um, we've got some you know, important players struggling, like Riley Adams has a 66 OPS plus. Um, Andy Burns is struggling quite a bit, a 55 OPS plus. That one big game he had for us this week, notwithstanding. Um, Alford, Anthony Alford has a 26 OPS plus. That is just terrible. He's hitting 138. So Alford, you know, he's not going to have a lot of time to turn things around. Um, my lead... Guy is um, to replace Teoscar Hernandez on May 1st, if Hernandez doesn't just suddenly snap out of it, is Billy McKinney. McKinney's cooled off a little bit, but he hit home runs, I think, in a consecutive games early in the sim. Uh, 294, 355, 647, seven home runs. He's leading the team by a lot. So he's definitely a guy that we want to uh, bring up. We can see here in the New Hampshire Fisher Cats, um, Alejandro Kirk has struggled of late. He has gone cold. His OP, OBP is only 230. He's not striking out a lot, but he is not really walking a ton. And we can see here, he's got a lot of potential here in contact. Um, I th you know, from what I've seen from him, that looks fairly accurate. Ryan Noda is a guy who's also struggling, but he's got a 333 on base percentage. He is actually um, leading the league in walks, but he's also fourth in the league in strikeouts. Um, so we're seeing, you know, this, the three true outcome for Ryan Noda. But uh, if he gets his batting average up even to 220 and he keeps taking walks at this pace, that's going to be like a 450 on base percentage. That's going to be pretty spectacular. We do need to see a little bit more power from Noda, though. 
Logan Warmoth struggling as well. He did have that one good game. Kevin Smith is producing about league average, three home runs, uh, 313 on base percentage, 429 slugging. That's pretty decent. Uh, Kevin Vicuña is turning into kind of a monster, seven doubles, uh, 323, 364, 468. He's not going to walk a ton, um, and you can see he's got a fairly limited potential, but he may be the type of guy that, that sort of is that plays beyond his ratings. There are some of those in this game. Josh Palacio struggling, 55 OPS plus. Uh, Demi Oromoloy at a 45 OPS plus, but Brock Lundquist having a solid start to the season. I think this is his second year in double A now. Last year, he did struggle a bit. He had a 232, 308, 351 slash line. This year, he's obviously off to a better start. So maybe having a second chance at the level is going to be good for him. Pitching wise, 16 guys on the roster here. Luciano is really struggling a little bit. Um, Murphy is okay, but he could be better. Uh, Hector Perez is also looking pretty rough. Um, we have him on a 90 pitch limit. Um, I may move him to the bullpen. Uh, Sopko is looking pretty good. Joey Murray is actually the class of this starting rotation right now. He leads the league in FIP, fielding independent pitching, strikeouts per nine, strikeouts to walks ratio, and war through his 17 innings. So he is actually, you know, being a monster here in double A. We'll see how much more he can do. That 35 movement rating is probably really going to limit him to double A, triple A, um, at least in this game. And Maximo Castillo is not doing well with a bad uh, strikeout to walk ratio, nine walks, eight strikeouts. And uh, Travis Bergen struggling, but he has a good strikeout to walk ratio, 10 strikeouts, two walks in 10 and a third innings. Bergen has a 40 uh, movement. A lot of the time, if they have good strikeout to walk ratios, you can kind of look to the uh, movement rating to see how many home runs they're going to give up. While Castillo hasn't given up a ton, actually he hasn't given up any yet, he is getting hit. So if they have low movement, they're going to hit, get hit. And I think once you see the guys getting to AAA in the major leagues, they've got stronger hitters who have more developed power ratings. And so some of those hits that they give up, those doubles, triples, are going to turn into home runs. For the Dunedin Blue Jays, one of the storylines we are watching is Nick Allgaier. And Allgaier, you know, I loved watching him in spring training in 2019. I'm going to take him off the fourth start because I think in the game, I mean, you look at those ratings, 45, 40, 30 potential. That's just not, you know, I don't think that's anything near what he's really like. So I'm going to take him off the fourth start and I'm going to let the AI do what they want with him. And they have put him in the bullpen way down at the bottom there as a lefty specialist. We have 34 pitchers. No, we don't have 34 pitchers. Uh, we have 21 pitchers. So that's kind of a lot. Um, 21 pitchers for the... Um, for the Dunedin Blue Jays. So that's a lot of pitchers. Josh Winkowski has been outstanding so far. Simeon Woods Richardson was good in his last start. Um, so those numbers are a little worrisome. Um, Alec Manoa, also a little worrisome, but he had a good last start. Cray Finfrock, has, uh, Cree Finfrock has been outstanding. And Graham, uh, Graham Spraker has been in and out of the rotation. Um, and interesting to watch is going to be Finfrock and see how he does as a starter since he's really only been used as a reliever in uh, professional baseball. On the offense, uh, Gabby Moreno has been solid. Uh, Chris Beck has been solid. Beck is actually a, in a tie for the league lead in stolen bases. Um, Jake Brote has been great when he gets into the lineup. Casey Clemens has been really pretty strong. Uh, Samad Taylor has been really, really good. 255, 355, 431. That's a 119 OPS plus, so that's really good. Johnny Aiello has been a little bit uh, rough, and I'm going to take him off the fourth start as well. And we'll see what Donnie Murphy does with him. And he is now back up. They're going to have Nick Podkul playing every day. Podkul's off to a great start. Um, Otto Lopez is struggling a little bit. That's, you know, about what I expect. But a little better for the average would be good. 
Uh, Chavez Young, 148 OPS. Reggie Pruitt is 86. You know, he's going to have a decent OBP, and if he steals some bases, which he's not doing right now, it's one of the fastest guys in the organization, and in fact, that speed rating should be a bit higher. Um, and then... And then Griffin Conine, he's putting up some solid numbers. Finally, we'll go to the Lansing Lugnuts, take a look at how some of these guys are doing. Um, on the offensive side, Clark is struggling big time. He's got an OPS plus of 23. I am going to do a couple things here. I am going to make Hagen Danner a... I'm going to move Philip Clark down to the Vancouver Canadians. I'm going to make Andy McGuire a full-time pitcher. And I am going to change his... Uh, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to change Andy McGuire's position. Uh, if he's not as a pitcher, he's listed as a relief pitcher now. Okay, so that's good for Andy McGuire. Um, and I'm going to make Hagen Danner a hitter. So we're going to take off use as a two-way player. And he is now just a catcher. Um, I'm going to leave Brett right there for the time being. But if you can see now, we're going to get Jorman Rodriguez some playing time. And that's really the thing that I wanted to do in this situation, is get Rodriguez into the games. Uh, Hagen Danner will be our starting catcher, and Brent Wright is going to be our third catcher. Will Robertson has been solid. Tanner Morris, solid. There's a lot of guys who are producing decently. Uh, Jesus Lopez got injured, but he'll be back soon. LJ Talley hasn't been bad. Ronnie Brito has, so he's going to be on the chopping block, unfortunately. Uh, Jordan Groshans has been solid. We, I'm still waiting for a little more power from him. Um, McGregory Contreras has had some good power with a 239 ISO, but he's struggling to put the ball in play. Uh, Cameron Eden has been quite strong. Looking at, that, looking at that 907 OPS, 317 batting average. He's really filling up the sheet with uh, those extra base hits. Um, defensively, we're, we've got to bring up that center field rating, that 25 rating for center field, but he's going to play every day. And DJ Neal has also been pretty solid. He had a rough year last year. Um, but he's been pretty solid so far this year. On the mound, Juan De Paula is our, you know, he's the ace. If you look at the league stats, he is first in the league in war, first in walks per walks per uh, sorry strikeouts to walks ratio, seventh in strikeouts to nine, first in walks to nine ratio. Usually, for me, when deciding when to promote a player. A lot of it has to do with their control. And with two walks in 20 innings, to me, that's enough. He's going up to Dunedin. And so that takes care of one pitcher. <laughs> we now have 23 pitchers now that uh, we've moved, uh, we've moved uh, Hagen Danner over to a full-time uh, hitting job. So we still have a ton of pitchers here. Here's Grant Townsend. He didn't get into any games. Grant had contacted us before the sim was done. And so we said, you know what, Grant, you did well last year. You're going to come up to Lansing. The tough part is to find him innings. Fitz Stadler, who was, you know, pretty decent in uh, and showed potential last year with the lug nuts. Uh, he hasn't gotten into any games either. Neither has Luis Quinones, who technically shouldn't because in real life he is suspended. Uh, Joey Polito, who I... Th so he hasn't gotten into any games yet. Mitch McCown, Andy McGuire. Um, none of these guys have pitched. And Grayson Huffman with just two-thirds. Luke Gillingham, two-thirds. Juan Diaz hasn't pitched. So we've got 23 pitchers on this team. It's, it's going to be a tough decision come May 1st. But as of now, we've got Jared DeCessory into the starting rotation. Um, we'll have to see. I mean, it's not very far. We're at Monday, April 27th, so May 1st is going to be a tough day. So that is our summary for today. I'm going to go back to our home screen. The Blue Jays are in second place if we take a look at our standings.
We're in second place. We've got now a two-game lead over the Boston Red Sox for third. The Tampa Bay Rays have stumbled a little bit. Their uh, winning percentage is down a tiny bit. They went 6-4 and four in the last 10, but they are on a four-game winning streak. They have a magic number of 128. Um, and we're in first place in the wild card. And a magic number of 134, if anyone is counting. Um, so that's what we're doing so far. We're going to come back to you. Uh, I think we're coming back to you on uh, Mondays and Fridays. So this will be a Friday episode. We'll see you on Monday. Uh, thanks to GM Games for hosting us. And come on back soon. Go take a look at Blue Jays from away. Uh, lots of stuff in our archives about a lot of these minor league players. And uh, we have tons of podcasts where you can hear interviews with all kinds of players going back several years. We've got Marcus Stroman on there. We've got uh, Ryan Barucki. We've got Griffin Conine. We've got um, just tons and tons of guys that we've talked to over the years. So head on over to Blue Jays from away and uh, come back next time for Judgment Day. May 1st will be Judgment Day. Thanks very much for joining us and have a great day.